please welcome Maria Emmerich and Dr. Robert Kiltz. Mic's on. Hello? Is it now? Hello? Do I need to scream? It's on. There we go. Hi, everybody. My name is Maria. I am so excited to be here with Dr. Kiltz. I am very, very honored. And we want to teach you everything keto. Um, keto has helped me change my life in many, many ways. Um, at, when I was 16 years old, I went to the doctor. And the doctor, um, I was prescribed an, anti, an antacid, and she told me that she had acid reflux when she drank water, so I thought it was totally normal. I was also um, 60 pounds heavier. I was given an antidepressant, and I was told I had PCOS. I feel that it was fate that that same week, my dog, Tiva, was a beautiful golden retriever, and she was losing patches of her hair. And I went to the vet, and can anybody guess what the vet asked me? What are you feeding her, right? And it was something that my doctor never asked me. Maybe this doctor would, right? <laughs> now I would. Hey, we're going to switch it out. Yep. Do you want to sit? Hello? OK, this is much better. Yay! Um, so this is a picture of me when I was a little tyke, and it just shows that my love of baking started at a very early age. Um, it also showed my love for sugar at a very early age. I had a lot of ear infections, always on antibiotics for them. Um, my new addiction is cold therapy. I wish you could see this picture. We were just talking about it in the back. <laughs> That's me running in the woods in the north woods of Wisconsin. Um, but. If you venture into this keto world, do not focus on what you can't have. You gotta focus on all the yummy things that you can have, that you once thought were bad, right? Being like that in all aspects of life will serve you well. Um, I have this slide up here because I find it interesting. It says addiction. And what I find interesting is when somebody wants to cut out cigarettes or alcohol, everybody's very respectful, right? But if you tell somebody that you just started keto or you're cutting sugar out of your life, guess what happens? The food pushers come out of the woodwork. <laughs> Even your mother. Right? Hi, Mom. No, just kidding. Um, how we eat is killing us. This is just the standard American diet. Um, junk food, junk food everywhere. So this is just the uh, obesity trends that are happening. And you can see just the change of... Um, 25 to 30 percent over, over, overweight or obese. Um, what's interesting is in 2010, they had to change their standard on how they even um, were doing those slides because the rate of obesity is going up like mad. So you can just see we have a big problem here. And what's going on? Sugar and carbohydrate consumption is going through the roof. And I just wanted to show you, this is kind of like, maybe you're not eating this way, but I just wanted to do a little breakdown of what a standard breakfast is, of coffee with cream and sugar, total raisin bran, and some grape juice for breakfast. And then your snack, of course you need a snack. Somebody brought in donuts, and you were good. You only had one. And you have some coffee with cream and sugar with that. And then lunch, you didn't pack a lunch, so you're going to McDonald's or whatever, and you're having a fast food meal with some ketchup and a large drink. Your snack is Mountain Dew and Twizzlers, and then dinner is Papa John's pizza. All right, so we did the breakdown on this. That's 5,000 calories. But what's really scary is, pushing the wrong button, my husband's a mathematician here. That's almost four cups of sugar in your bloodstream. Four cups. And I know that was kind of an extreme diet, but I've certainly seen worse, right? So now, what's interesting is this is what might people try on a low-fat type diet. They do coffee with skim milk, and then they have multigrain Cheerios with a banana and some grape juice. And then snack is a half a cup of pineapple in some vitamin water, 
And then lunch is yo plate yogurt and a slim fast. They didn't even chew their food. And then dinner is a small salad with fat-free French dressing, one cup of spaghetti, which is not a lot, and a half a cup of marinara sauce with one slice of garlic bread and fat-free frozen yogurt. That's almost 2,000 calories, and we're still at 87 teaspoons of sugar. That is not going to solve the problem. That is too much sugar. But that's what the commercials tell us is healthy. Even my kids will say, well, mom, they said skim milk is healthy on TV. It's like they're going to tell you a lot of lies on TV. But so four grams of carbohydrates become one teaspoon of sugar in your body. So a lot of people say, well, Maria, I don't really like sweet things. I don't like sugar. I was like, do you like salty things? They're like, yes. I was like, well, is it salt on broccoli or is it chips? Because the chips are going to turn into um, 32 teaspoons of sugar. That's more than a blizzard would. But people don't think about the salty things as sugar in your bloodstream, too. And what's really scary is in 1840, a typical person had about two teaspoons of sugar a day. And in 2009, it's 63 teaspoons of sugar. I should look up now. But see this in the corner? That's baby formula, chocolate baby formula. And that's a real thing. If you think about skim milk, a cup of that is four starbursts. These are my little kiddos. They eat uh, keto and they like to help me. Aren't they cute? So what is ketosis? Every single cell in your body can run on two different sources of fuel. It can run on glucose, sugar, or it can run on free fatty acids or ketones. All right, so if you restrict sugar and starch enough, after adaptation period of about two to four weeks, your body can start using that fat for fuel. This has huge benefits, uh, lowering your A1C, healing PCOS, all of these types of things. A glucose burner, which is really scary, is your body needs this constant glucose for fuel if you're a, a glucose burner, okay? And so that's where you hear you need to eat every two to three hours or your metabolism will slow down. That doesn't happen if you're in ketosis. But if you're a glucose burner, when you run out of that fuel, you either need to tap into your muscle or your bones to keep that fuel source going. And so what happens when you're asleep? You lose a lot of muscle and bone tissue. And Bodybuilders know this, that's why they'll wake up to eat something in the middle of the night. But um, if you're in ketosis, you're using free fatty acids for fuel. So why we need fat? We've been demonizing, demonizing fat for way too long. Vitamins A, D, E, and K, those are fat-soluble vitamins. If you are one to take a vitamin D supplement on an empty stomach, you have to think again because it's fat soluble. You need fat for absorption. Um, it helps conserve or it activates the flow of bile. Um, if you have gallstones, your galls are like, they're just like a bicep. You need to work them to keep them strong. If you don't eat fat, your gall is going to um, atrophy and be very weak. Um, it also helps conserve protein and helps build bones. Bones are primarily made up of saturated fat. Did you know that? Pretty interesting. My uh, great grandma Cress, we were at Christmas and she opened the door. She was 94 years old. She opened the door, which she thought was the bathroom, but it was a basement. She tumbled all the way down to the, on the steps onto a concrete floor and she didn't break one bone. But great grandma Cress, mini Cress, she always had a coffee cup, a couple of them, of lard in her fridge. I always wanted to throw them away because it looks so gross. And she's like, no, that's liquid gold. And I'm like, it's not liquid. But she always used that in her cooking. She was always using saturated fat. And that's what your bones are made out of. But we've been demonizing it for so long. This is why osteopenia, osteoporosis on the, is on the rise. Um, it helps balance blood sugar levels out when you eat too many carbohydrates. It's the building blocks for estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. And it's essential, the essential fatty acids, they're called essential fatty acids because your body can't make them, you need to eat them. And every cell of your body is made up of these essential fatty acids. 
your brain is 60% fat. Could depression, anxiety be part of this low-fat diet problem? Yes. Cholesterol makes healthy hormones. What's interesting is I did a speech um, in my hometown, and the woman that was on stage before me was a dietitian, and she demonized saturated fat. She said, you have to get rid of all the cholesterol, and she was saying you need to eat canola oil, which is like, oh, we know we need to get rid of vegetable oils, okay? And so she was a very nice woman, and I didn't want to make her feel bad. So I, when I got on stage, I said, what's the first thing a newborn baby should be fed? Breast milk, right? Do you know what breast milk is primarily made up of? Cholesterol, saturated fat. That is because it helps build that everything that the baby needs, everything that everybody's body needs. It helps make healthy hormones. It helps build their gonads, all of these things. What happens when we cut all, all the cholesterol? Our hormones start to suffer. No lie, when I work with a, a male client who is taking a statin drug to lower his cholesterol numbers, almost 100% of the time, he's also taking Viagra. And that's because that cholesterol-lowering drug is getting rid of his testosterone. Cholesterol is so important that in a deficit, if you don't eat it, guess what? Your liver is going to make it because it is a necessity. But after a while, your liver gets tired and toxic. We both agree that it shouldn't be called fatty liver. It should be called carbohydrate liver. <laughs> what happens is if your liver gets tired and toxic, we often always see a thyroid disorder. It's because T4 is converted into the activated T3 in the liver, not actually in the thyroid. So you have to look at your liver health for so many things. And we also were talking about the American Heart Association. They put the check of approval on all of these foods. Seriously, a slushy, a slushy gets the Heart American Association check. Why? Because there's zero cholesterol in it. And that uh, healthy choice has more sugar than three Snickers bars, full size. Not right. Uh, hormones in our diet. Weight loss is all about hormone manipulation. If you do keto for weight loss, keto is great for so many things. Um, you also want to be aware of different keto pr things that could be harming you, such as soy, flax, chia, alcohol, caffeine, and sugar also increase male androgen hormones causing PCOS. Um, and alcohol, we know changes our estrogen and testosterone levels. Topical products, that's gonna change your hormone levels too. Lotions, makeup, scented candles, they're all called obesogens. Um, the environment, such as dryer sheets, pollutions in the air, um, all of these things can impact your hormone output. I, I put this up here because we talk about a beer belly. It's not a beer belly, it's more like an estrogen belly. That's the alcohol is causing. Um, how to eat for ketosis, that's my little boy, Kai, um, for his birthday, he loves for me to make him meatball cupcakes. And so they're little meatloaves, and I'll put guacamole on top with a cherry tomato. And uh, obviously he doesn't seem deprived, he really loves them. Uh, but what is keto? So we're going to play a little game. If you know what keto is, let's say yes or no, okay? Is Cheese and nuts keto? Yes. Is that keto? Yes. Is that keto? Technically, it could be keto. There's, um, I got all of these pictures off of Instagram of people who say that they're keto and this is what they eat for ketosis. Is that keto? Yes. Is that keto? I didn't say if it was healthy. But is it keto? I guess so. Rice with a bunch of fat on it. It actually, listen, there's something called keto rice. You can find it on the internet. If you add enough fat to anything, you'll probably read ketones. Is it a good thing? No. 
But if you put enough MCT oil over a bunch of white rice, you'll probably read ketones. Higher ketones do not mean better results. I'll just put that out there. Is that keto? Yes, fasting is keto. It's an empty plate. Is that keto? Sugar-free jello? Technically, I didn't say if it was healthy. <laughs> Technically, it's keto. Should you eat it? No, it's a bunch of food dye and aspartame. Um, is that keto? Yes. Yes, bulletproof coffee? Is that keto? It's not a healthy game. Yes, it's keto. <laughs> but margarine is something you should just throw away, right? Technically, it's keto. It's not really a food, though, right? So what are your goals? Keto is great for so many things. Um, I had the great opportunity to speak in Russia about epilepsy. Um, it's great for cancer, moods. That's one of my favorite testimonies is when people um, go from almost being hospitalized for their depression or anxiety, and keto just brings them, their, lifts their moods. Fertility, weight loss, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, blood pressure, heart disease, so many things. How to get keto adapted? You want to focus on two things. You want to keep your carbs as low as possible. Kind of play this like a game of golf. The lowest score wins, right? I don't play golf, but I understand the concept. And you want to hit your protein goal. It's about 0.8 times your lean mass. It's not a lot, but that's kind of like the magic number. Um, if you hit these two things, you will be in ketosis. Um, fat, it kind of depends on your goal. All right, if you have a lot of body fat, you, that can be part of your 70% fat diet, all right? Um, and then the more dietary fat there is, the less body fat there will be used for fuel, and that's called lipolysis, all right? Um, don't forget hydration. Um, you want to add your electrolytes, and you can get these naturally through food and things like that, but your body releases a lot of the salt um, water retention, carbohydrates hold on to water. And so when you eliminate those carbohydrates, along goes a lot of water loss. And this is that first five to 10 pounds you see in that first week, and they're like, yay! A lot of it's water loss, okay? But that's a good thing. You're getting rid of all of that inflammation. But with all of that water loss goes a lot of energy. And you might find your he legs really heavy walking upstairs, or you're, you have some low moods. It's usually low potassium, magnesium, um, and salt. And so I always carry salt in my purse. I had it with me this morning. Um, and it helps reduce that keto flu. Um, if you have constipation on the keto diet, that's probably not enough salt in your diet. The colon needs a lot of salt. It does not need fiber. All right? We were just saying newborn babies go number two all the time and they're not eating fiber. Okay? Always check with your doctor if you do decide to add in electrolytes. Um, we still have hamburger nights. We just have them a little bit differently. We still have lasagna night. And if you haven't had my protein noodle lasagna, it's a hit. It's free. It's on my blog. Um, it's really good. And we still have uh, pizza and ice cream night. There are my boys and my husband making a bunch of pizzas. I grew up in Tombstone Pizza World. All right, I'm from Medford, Wisconsin. This is where the first frozen pizza in the world was invented. So we always had pizzas in our freezer, and that's what we do. When we make pizzas, we make like 12, and we put them in the freezer, and then they can just make pizza as they need. And there we are, we make push pops, and on our bike rides, we'll eat push pops. Uh, we still have taco night, it's just a little bit differently. And what's interesting is some people say, oh, it costs way too much to eat keto. And we, were, we got home from the beach one day in the summer. And it wasn't a busy time of the day. It was like 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And I said, Craig, you turn your camera on, your video camera, and I'm going to turn my camera on. And so one child stayed with me, and we made Chipotle at home. And Craig drove to Chipotle, which wasn't far, and he got Chipotle. Not only did it cost about half the amount to make it at home, we also had leftovers for the next day. And it took, we were already cleaning up dinner by the time he came home with the Chipotle. So it takes effort, but it is not cheaper. Um, we still make fun, food fun. I mean, my kids are eight and nine, and so they're my little gummy bears. It's easy to make. Um, they're fun, they love them. Um, 
So more tips, befriend the slow cooker. If you're new to cooking or you're just not, you're too busy or whatever it is, what I often do is I fill the slow cooker the night before and I put the shell in the fridge. I have three slow cookers. And then all I have to do is take them out and turn them on before I start work. And then it makes the house smell delicious when you get home. Um, planning ahead. Um, we make keto waffles, muffins, all of that type of stuff. And they're in the freezer so my kids can just pop them in the toaster oven, just like an Eggo waffle, and they can make them themselves. And don't be afraid, afraid to ask for substitution at restaurants. They're often very friendly when it comes to that. I mean, you're paying them, right? They're happy that you're there. Just say, I don't want any bread, I don't want the potato, whatever it is. Um, I have a whole bunch of like keto, keto shopping things that I have. That's my pantry um, and discount codes if you want. My blog is mariamindbodyhealth.com if you're interested. Um, I want to show you this. I'm kind of the underdog in this whole keto world. I'm kind of a private person that prefers to run in the woods. Um, but uh, I love helping people. I'm an introvert. Um, I'm usually helping people online, things like that. But I love food, and I know how to make it delicious and fast. Um, I'm a busy working mom. Does anybody know who that is, that picture? That's Halle Berry. Halle Berry likes my books. I'm pretty proud of that. Um, yeah, that's her holding the quick and easy ketogenic recipes, and she'll often make those on her Instagram. Um, there she is holding my book again with her trainer. Um, Valerie Bertinelli also likes keto food. Um, she, she made my... Uh, breakfast Sammies, and Al Roker. Uh, about four weeks ago, Al Roker made my keto bread on uh, the Today Show. I only wish that he would, or Good Morning America, to the Today Show, that's what it is. I'm sorry, don't watch a lot of TV, but I just wish he would have asked me to be on there, helping him. Um, so I just want you to like be empowered at how powerful keto can be. This man lost 200 pounds, Went from over 400 pounds to 167, or 176. Um, he was facing a kidney transplant. He had three heart attacks, um, numerous vac vascular diseases, and now he's strict keto. He's not lazy keto. That's amazing. Here's just some weight loss uh, testimonies. Um, I don't want to overwhelm you, but these are just a few people that send me emails every day of clients, how much they change their life. I mean, 254 pounds, 150 pounds, gained 20 pounds of muscle. Um, don't say you're too old. This couple that I worked with, 73 and 77 years old, lost 104 pounds. Changed their life. Type 2 diabetes. A1C went from 10.7 um, to, well, we don't know, because we can't see it, but that's all right. These are all just like type 2 diabetes of people going for A1C from 11.1 .1 to 5.1 in three months. And these just keep coming in all the time. It's amazing. Eczema and skin issues. Um, this girl I remember specifically, she was in college and she called me crying because her body was just covered in hives. And I said, I can tell you what to do and it will help you. And within um, five days, that's her results. IBS, acid reflux, Crohn's, and colitis. Here's just a few testimonies of that. I'm just going to keep going. MS, Graves, and Parkinson's. Um, MS for uh, 20 years, and she's now um, in total recovery. Uh, sister battled MS for more than 25 years, and within 90 days, she saw, saw results. Alzheimer's mood and autism. Here's just a few different um, testimonies that we've got on that. Fibromyalgia, chronic pain, um, and we'll have someone on stage in a little bit talking about chronic pain. Um, no more migraines, no more asthma, no more joint pain. I can't lie about these, they just keep coming in. So when people say, oh, keto's not healthy, it's not good for you to do long term, I think there's a good way and a bad way to do everything. There's a good way to be a vegan and a bad way, you know, like you could do every, I mean, or an Oreo is technically vegan, right? We're talking about the healthy way of e eating keto, eating real foods, that's delicious. Kidney function, um, was in stage three kidney disease and I'm now in stage two, which is great. Um, A1C is 5.1. 
So these are just some of the um, stage three in 2017, healed mind with the keto way of eating. So that's why I wanted to post these because a lot of people say keto is bad for your kidneys. Not if you do it correctly. So here's just a few medications. Um, that handful of pills down to a half of a pill, which is amazing. Um, 600 pills a month got off all prescription medications. So not only are you feeling better, you're saving a whole heck of a lot of money on all of the different medications that you're spending. And here's just families, which I'll run through. So you can do it with your family. My kids do it. They enjoy it. We still go out to eat and do all of that. Um, I do have um, many books out. Um, I have a free e-book e on my website if you want a free book. I understand um, everybody loves free things, and that's on my blog. Um, lots of good uh, meal plans in there. And I have um, services, new keto courses uh, that just went up and uh, ketoadapted.com. Dr. Kiltz, you're the man. I'll take this. Maria, I love you. Maria is amazing, and I learned about keto from Maria and many others. And uh, we get, I get one slide for a minute, but mostly I'm just going to share my story because I'm a fertility doctor. I'm a Western-trained physician that was taught to teach people how to be healthy. I take care of sick people. And in some way, I think we're all sick and we're suffering. And what are the recommendations for a healthy diet? Anyone want to just shout it out? Fruit, fiber, vegetables, lean meat, but not red meat. Eat like a grazing animal three to six times a day. And look at where we are today. The hospitals are growing. The cost of health care is rising. We're taking more and more pills. More of our friends and family members are suffering from every disease you know. Hypertension, diabetes, cancer, stroke, irritable bowel, colitis, Crohn's, I'll go down the list. Mental problems, I know. Everyone's saying he's crazy, right? It's sad. My sister Maria died of diabetes. Best friend Dave, a doctor, amazing guy, really healthy, looked great, cancer. Why? Has anyone ever figured it out? Must be something mysterious, the water, our genetics, our food, toxins. Anyone know anyone that's died of an overdose of a pesticide? Most common disease, diabetes, hypertension, cancer. How come? Because we as physicians and healthcare practitioners have been trained to feed people like pigs and cows. We're not grazing animals. We're more like, like lions, tigers, and eagles. I'm sorry. We have been taught to think of ourselves as unhealthy and unwell. We've been taught that being overweight is bad, but in fact, obesity causes not one disease. This is the amazing, crazy story. But we carry around a bucket, and I call it the bowels. And what do we put in the bucket? We're putting lettuce, tomatoes, fiber, vegetables, kale. What is kale? Anyone know what it is? Juicing smoothies. All right, I love pasta. I'm an Italian. My grandmother lived 104, Angelina from Naples. She smoked Pall Malls, drank Manhattans, and she was a little negative and nasty. You know, you ever heard the term like, you know, don't nice people die young? So I try to be a little nasty to someone every day. Well, we know that's not the right thing to recommend, is it? But what I've learned is we are Ferraris, and we're lions and lionesses. We are the most amazing, amazing genetic material, and we're all almost identical. And I know everyone likes to say we're all unique and different, but when we look under a microscope at a liver, an ovary, uh, a, 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 a lungs, or heart, it's the same. Our personalities obviously are very different, unique, and amazing, but on the inside, we're all a miracle machine. Amazing and beautiful and wonderful. 
And I always say, start the day with thank you, God, for the day. Look in the mirror and say that and smile to yourself. And then everyone else around you, but that's what we need to learn to do is look at each and every one of us and think, wow, isn't it amazing we're even alive? But we've been taught to feed ourselves like what? Pigs and cows. The industrial food complex of this world is pretty amazing. Grass and grains, they fry our brains. And the bowels become a beer-making machine. How do you make beer? Grains, bacteria, and yeast. And I call salad nature's toilet paper. It's basically contaminated. And what woman isn't eating salad, and men too, thinking it's the best thing for us? Not one bit. When you fill the belly with carbs, it makes beer. Alcohol, aldehydes, heat, and gas. It's deadly. And when you eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and snacks in between, and you're packing the bowel with more and more, and it's trying to get out as much as it can, but it can't because you put fiber in there, which is called steel wool. Fiber is the leading cause of cancer in the colon. We have been duped. And if you actually read the evidence where it all came from, just like the American Heart Association gets paid money to put a healthy label on Cheerios, what is Cheerios? You guys know? It's a grain. That means it's sugar. What is salad? Lettuce. It's plant material that means it's what? Sugar. It's not good for us. But I will bet a billion dollars that simple sugar from time to time is better for you than eating lettuce all the time. But I don't make sense. And I still try to figure out how my best friend Dave died of lymphoma. But remember, when you eat all this beautiful, colorful material at the market that's mostly fruits, vegetables, and fiber, it goes into the stomach and becomes simple sugar in the intestines. Did you know that? I didn't either. We have zero requirements to ever eat a carbohydrate. Did you know that? I didn't. But if you do not get air, lots of it, a little bit of water, and eat from time to time, and my bet is 10,000 years ago, we did not have six meals a day. We probably ate a few days a week. And we're built to go days, if not weeks, without guess what? Food. But we are always searching for food because your brain does not know that Wegmans is open tomorrow. And who has the largest pharmacy in the area making billions of dollars on us because of the healthy food we're told to eat, which actually is not, which doesn't make sense, and it didn't make sense to me either as a Western-trained physician. We're teaching people to eat mostly grass and grains like a grazing animal. My bet is we came out of the trees not to eat the grass, but eat the grass eaters. Please, no disrespect to vegans and vegetarians. There are ways to do keto in every single diet you want to do. But if you insist on eating three to six times a day, your belly's going to be full of what? Lettuce, sugar, which fills the bowels, and it sends sugar to the liver. And the primary function of the liver is to do what? Anyone know? What? Detox. Detox what? What? Junk. The liver makes fat, and if it doesn't make fat, you die. The liver's primary job is to make fat. If you do not make fat, you die. You don't have a liver or insulin, you die. We have zero requirement to ever eat sugar and my bet is not one cell in our body uses sugar for energy. We make fat. When we all have so much fat around, why would you ever use sugar? And the medical industry 
is giving you drugs to get your sugar down. And then it says, eat what? Sugar, vegetables, fruit, fiber, which are contaminated with what? Bacteria and yeast that ferment in our bowels and then make what? Alcohol. Is drinking a glass of wine good for our health? No. Would you feed it to a child? Never. I'm sorry, a glass of wine a day causes cancer. It might make you feel good, but from time to time, these things may be okay, but in any amount that is excessive, it's never good for us. I know I'm sorry I'm the bearer of bad news, aren't I? We can't have that glass of red wine every day, but why are we supporting the industries that actually get us sick, that require all the pills, potions, and procedures? Do you ever wonder? So who's in charge of what goes into your mind and your mouth? We are. I am. Do we ever stand in front and say, you know what? Enough of the shit. Sorry. I promised I wouldn't use the F word. Does everyone here have faith in a higher power? Right? How many doctors talk about faith? Like, does your doctor ever say anything about having faith and believe and be positive about your health and wellness? Like, they're downers. Oh, my God, you're doing a bad job. You really need to be better at this, right? I'm going to write you a prescription, and by next time, I hope to see you a lot healthier than you are today. I'm depressed. What am I going to go do? I'm going to the bar, get some cigarettes, right? The human body is like a Ferrari. How many here would love to have a Ferrari? I'm going to give you one. Come on. Don't be shy. We love fancy cars and sexy women. Come on. What is our gear in life for, right? To make babies, reproduction. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist. I see so many couples, individuals suffering from the inability to have babies. And when they do keto, guess what? They make babies naturally. Oh my God, that's going to hurt my business. If I teach everyone how to eat better, and you guys know what my diet is? Bacon, eggs, butter, beef, ice cream. And I'm going to be making some Kiltz's ice cream a little later today at our booth. And basically, what is Kiltz's ice cream? It's cream, eggs, a little bit of white sugar cane sugar, and a little bit of vanilla. Does that sound good? Like my favorite place is Gannon's, by the way. And I love ice cream. My grandmother lived 84. She loved ice cream. We love food. Who doesn't love food? I mean, if you don't love food, you're what? Dead. Sorry. And we all love life, and we all love eating, but I eat one meal a day. When? At night. Rest and digest. Fed and put to bed. Because when do your bowels basically get the best blood flow? When you're resting. And who here takes naps several times a day? Come on. We don't take enough naps. See, I'm in my office and I'm literally, I go like in my, I go into an exam room and I just lay down for five minutes. I can take a nap sitting in a chair. Hopefully it's not why I'm talking to you though, right? One meal a day. All right, so the five causes of disease. Number one is glucose. Glycation is the leading cause of every disease, and our glucose is meant to be probably in the 60s to 70s, not the 80 to 110. One meal a day at night. You have to simplify the sugars and cook them to kill the yeast and bacteria. Add Fat. Who doesn't love fat? Cush and curves. That's the key to life. Fat is fertility. And without it, we die.
and we don't reproduce. The concept to get skinny, I mean, if you were skinny 10,000 years ago and there's a famine, guess where you're at? Right? Your brain doesn't know the difference today as it did 10,000 years ago. Eating, as we have been taught, is wrong by modern medicine, unfortunately. And the cancer centers are getting bigger, healthcare costs are going up, and it is crazy. The second cause of disease is plant antigens. We're allergic to the food we eat. My daughter would die to a banana, an avocado, but people are dying from allergies to food, and we don't even know it. Sorry. Phytochemicals. Anyone knows what a phytochemical is? The phytochemicals are the chemicals plants make to protect themselves from being eaten and digested. And we eat them colorful, fiber, all sorts of variety of food that comes from where? Everywhere. Like, we just buy it at the grocery store, pack our basket, take it home, because it's so healthy for us. But remember, it's colorful, it's a plant phytochemical. Do you know that cyanide and arsenic are in plants? And we eat it to abandonment, right? It's so good for us. Who said? The supermarketers at the supermarket tell us what's good for us. And we believe them, don't we? Because they have our best interest, don't they? Sorry. Lard. Who makes lard? Animals make lard. Well, well, we render lard, and so like I make duck, I make French fries in duck grease. Like, is that like the best thing ever in the universe? All right, let's see here. Plant antigens, plant, plant phytochemicals, glucose, fiber. We're filling the colon with fiber. Bacteria and yeast ferment in the colon. Anyone have like bad colon? I did. It's painful. It's bloody. They're now like making us get someone looking upstairs every day, right? It's crazy shit. Sorry. But fiber is deadly. And I'm sorry, fiber does break down in our bowels. And bacteria and yeast love fiber because fiber makes heat, gas, alcohol, aldehydes. And it not only is in locally in our colon, but it's spread everywhere. MS, ALS, cancer, dementia, arthritis. And when I started keto 10 years ago, it was like, oh my God, these things go away. It's hard to believe. How many people here are on more than one drug, have a pharmaceutical that costs them way too much money? It's ridiculous. Number five is exercise. Exercise is deadly for a Ferrari. I'm not going to let you take my Ferrari to the racetrack and think it's going to last longer. Who has a car here and has their neighbor put extra miles on it or put a plow in front of it so it lasts longer? Who here has had a knee replacement, a joint replacement, arthroscopy? The orthopedic centers are getting bigger. The, the hospital is getting bigger because we are exercising. Does a lion exercise? A lion loves to feed and nap, but not to run around. We humans are hunters, but we learn to hunt in packs because our eyes went from the side of our heads as a grazing animal to the front as a hunter. We are hunters and gatherers, not grazing animals. The advice we're given by our healthcare environment specialists is an industrial complex of making a lot of money. Don't make me think wrong here that um, making money is not a bad thing because we all like money. Who likes money? Right? Who would like my Ferrari that I don't own yet? These concepts are opposite what I learned 
is so opposite. I always say there was a guy once that was crucified for an opposite concept, but his philosophy is amazing. When we change what we believe and we begin to practice it by doing, not telling ourselves we can't do it, but if what you're doing isn't working, why would you not try or do something different? We are the most valuable, expensive, irreplaceable in the universe. If the advice you're given isn't working, guess what? It's time to change it up. Keto is a label like saying you're religious. There's lots of different ways. Your body requires a lot of oxygen, a little bit of water. I believe we pound too much water down also, which dilutes the enzymes in our bowels, and it's not good for us. We've been made to go up to three minutes without air, three days without water, and three weeks without food. When we begin to practice what I call intermittent feasting, so I intermittently feast. Remember, intermittent fasting is like I intermittently don't eat. But you want to intermittently eat once a day at night. Feed yourself and your family. Sit down, rest and relax, and then guess what? Go relax. Get off the treadmill. Deadly and dangerous. Stop lifting all these weights that you do not need. And I've gone now many years without exercise, and I will tell you, the joint pains are gone, the back pains are gone, the bowel problems are gone. Now, my brain, some people might say, is still a little crazy, but I bet being a little crazy is better than thinking you're too smart. And I've learned much from Maria and the ketogenic ideas... But my bet is you require zero sugar to be eaten, but from time to time, isn't it good? Sometimes, does anyone here meditate? Anyone here pray? We need to slow it down, and we need to pray more and meditate more and have faith more. In who? Ourselves. Cause we're kind of negative Nellies to ourselves, aren't we? Why would we do that? We need to practice more about being loving and kind to each other, right? And smiling more. And even when others have problems that they maybe don't believe us, we can at least listen Learn and love. That's what this means to me. Because we're all winners because we're in the what? Alive category. And health is the physical being, but wellness is the mental spirit being. Because we're all going to die of something. And many people, like my sister, suffered diabetes for 50 plus years but she still had a positive attitude of life. As did my mother Maria, that's why I love Maria so much, who died at 94 after a stroke 10 years before that, but she always had a positive attitude of life. So we need to each share more of a positive attitude of life and believe in who? Ourselves. I do love pigs, by the way and cows, and Yugos, and Ferraris. We should love everything and everyone more and more and more. Like I love Maria and Wendy, and thank you for providing this amazing nature, time, environment to bring so many people to share health and wellness. I could talk for three hours, but we are going to bring someone on stage. And Anyone know Dolce Vita? Woo! Right? Antoinetta Vigliotti. She's going to come on out. Antoinetta, come on out. And I'm going to let Antoinetta tell her story because I'm sure I'll miss it. But you know I'm a crazy keto man like Maria. 
and she's going to tell her story about keto. And please, thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, so back at, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, I weighed 236. And I got to 332, doing low calorie workouts, five different trainers. I tried a million different things, and nothing worked. And then, you know, the power of social media, uh, Ronnie Brower, he was posting how he was doing keto and working out and stuff. So I'm like, well, let me try those trainers. Let me try this diet, see what happens. And um, it was the easiest thing I've ever done. I hate to minimize it, but keto is sustainable. You're never hungry. And um, I don't know, I lost 150 pounds in two years, and I've never felt better. It, aside from the weight gain or weight loss, the energy level, the mental focus, the clarity, the just zest for life. Like, you, I feel 25 every day in my life. And it's the easiest thing I've ever done. I know it's crazy to say that, but it really is. So, I don't know. Thanks. Oh, yeah, we have a keto pizza, keto stromboli. Listen, everything can be ketofied. You will not feel deprived. The only thing yet that I haven't ketofied is popcorn. But I swear one of these days I will. So it's probably the only thing I really miss. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, what you serve at, at your restaurant and how it's unique and, and really helps people who are wanting to get started on keto. Right. So... We have um, developed a menu, and it's everything that I missed for three years um, once we launched it. And um, so we've taken all the carbs out, well, all the unhealthy carbs, and we've listed the macros, the proteins, and everything for you, so it's a little easier. Um, it kind of, it's hard when you go out to eat, you're asking for modifications. Um, the nice thing now, uh, there's no need for modifications. Um, maybe you don't want sriracha mash, so you have a horseradish mash. So we've literally tried to make it easy to come out and eat because it's depressing. I went to a food show. You know, it's just like this, three, 400 vendors shoving food in your face. And, you know, they're trying to sell it for the restaurant. And I didn't bite for two years. I never took and I never cheated. And I hate to use that word, too, because it's not cheating. It's a choice. We choose whether or not we want to eat that. We choose whether or not we want to hurt ourselves in the long run. Because, um, yeah, what I've learned is that the food that we're used to eating was not working for us. Like you said earlier, it worked against us. So, um, so yeah, I went to the food show. I get back to the hotel, and I ordered a salad with no tomatoes, no croutons. I get back to the hotel. I'm tired, whatever. And I... Um, open the bag and there's a half a loaf of bread in there. Like, who doesn't eat Italian bread, right? Like, at the end of the day, like, that's my trigger. So I had to get dressed. I had to throw it out at the end of the hallway because at 3 o'clock in the morning, I would have garbage picked because it's my trash. I'm the only one in there. There's nothing in the hotel trash. So my way home from Lake Placid, which is anybody's ever driven from Lake Placid, it's not a pleasant drive. But I was having like this psychotic argument with myself, like, well, if they had a keto menu, they'd know why I didn't want tomatoes and croutons. And she wouldn't have put the loaf of Italian bread in there. And, you know, so I said, well, how do I get upset at a restaurant not offering keto if we don't? So we launched the menu, and it's been well perceived. So thank you. I think we're going to also take some questions. Anyone here have any questions for any of us? Uh, who are we texting to? This is Wendy. Oh, you, got, you can text them. But if you, anyone want to ask a question. Hi. This is from Mary. Oh. How is cheese healthy on keto? Isn't it like a processed food? How is cheese healthy? Was that the question? Yes. yes. Well, ch cheese, if it's made right, it's made from fat, and, and fat is good for us. But I always say a little bit of anything from time to time is good for us. I mean, ultimately, none of us, a few of us went out and killed the animals we eat, so everything in some way is processed. And it, so some of us do, but but I think that the real thing here is that 
cheese, I, I know I eat cheese from time to time. Uh, I think hard cheeses, I eat blue cheese. I mix blue cheese with butter and put it on my fatty ribeye steak. For me, that is like the best with Malden salt, which is like perfect and amazing. And, I agree. Uh, so I think cheese is, you know, a, a little bit of anything, in my opinion, is good. And even that salad from time to time, but in my opinion, you should cook it before you eat it. Additions on cheese? So I work with a lot of people with autoimmune disorders, and in that case, I do cut all forms of dairy. Just put that out there. Butter, too. Don't kill me. Next question. Don't we need some bacteria in our gut? I will say that um, people miss... They think that fiber is the only prebiotic fiber, or prebiotic for your gut. What they don't understand is that the best form of prebiotic fiber is in the uh, collagen of meat. So if you're chewing on chicken wings, if you're chewing on ribs and all of that type of collagen, that is a better form of gut bacteria. And I'll tell you, I suffered from IBS. He mentioned that he had colon problems. I see Crohn's, colitis, diverticulitis all the time. The best thing to heal that, cut every single carbohydrate out and they feel much, much better. Fiber, carbohydrates. So I can't imagine getting bacteria and yeast and spreading all over my skin and thinking it's going to be good. The companies that make probiotics did the studies on probiotics. It doesn't make sense to me. We're studying them in an environment of eating food that in general is not good for us. So anything you do from time to time might make you feel better for a little bit. But my bet is probiotics are stupid. Sorry for the scientific answer, but it doesn't make any sense to me. It's another pill, a potion, and procedure that is unnecessary. Um, I, how do we get here after all these millions of years without probiotics? So I don't think they're good for us at all. This question is for Maria. What is the easiest way to track macros, especially after being keto for a while? It can feel like so much work and slip to lazy keto. Well, don't get stressed out too much about counting everything. I'm not a counter. I don't like counting points, whatever, you know. Um, but I do all the breakdown with all of my recipes for you. And uh, on my website, keto-adapted.com, you can just plug that in. Or I have a calculator that does it for you. So you don't have to do it. But I just like to eat real food just like you guys do. I eat real food. I never get stressed out about counting macros and things like that. Um, unless you're frustrated with your results, but like Dr. Kilt said, the thin people are the ones that died. So, I mean, that's just what I want to say. So, I, I personally don't measure, I don't weigh, I don't recommend it for anyone. I think it's really like Maria's book, find something you can do on a regular basis. I personally think variety and sides are deadly. Spice is deadly. You're not allowed to have boyfriends and girlfriends on the side, and too much variety in food is deadly. And so we're going crazy over finding variety, and if we don't have it, we go crazy. But um, believe it or not, I used to love to eat pasta every single day, and you can do a, a, a narrow diet is better. So pick five things on a regular basis. Stop counting it, and if it's packaged and has a label of what's in it and you have to read it, don't eat it. Although I do highly recommend dark chocolate with sugar cane sugar is my preference. I don't personally recommend the substitutes at all because the real sugar from time to time is what our body's made for. But remember, our body requires zero carbs ever to be eaten. But the beauty is our body knows how to make fat out of amino acids, protein, and out of sugar. That's the craziness. Protein, a high protein diet, by the way, is deadly. It should be a high fat, low protein, ultra low carb in my recommendation. This question is from Dave. This is directed to the keto folks. How easy is it to maintain a keto diet if you're severely allergic, like EpiPen allergic, to tree nuts and gluten? Well, there's no gluten in the keto diet, and I don't do 
much nuts in my uh, books at all. I don't know. I, I don't recommend nuts all the time. Seeds and nuts we're highly allergic to. There's no such thing as nut milk, seed milk, and it's deadly. Almond milk, all these cashew milks are deadly for us, I believe. They're all fake foods. And so seeds and nuts are the leading allergies. Even coconut, you have to be very careful. So, I mean, they're all industrial foods. If there isn't a manufacturer that is a large industrial complex to bottle them and package them and process them, you and I never would eat them. Well, Dr. Kiltz, what are your five things on your diet? Bacon? Bacon, eggs, butter, beef, cream. There I mean, ice cream, that's it. So, that, there you go. Just keep it simple. Question. What is PCOS? What? How does it affect women? Oh. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. What is it? It's uh, metabolic disorder. Uh, Let me just say one thing. Okay. It's prediabetes. And why do we have prediabetes? All of us have prediabetes because diabetes is what? Hyperglycemia. And all of us are walking around basically secreting sugar into our bloodstream from our bucket. The bucket is the bowels, which is full of what? Lettuce, kale, asparagus, which is secreting glucose into our bloodstream all day, all night. That's damaging to our body. It causes PCOS and metabolic disorder. Remember this, the recommendations of filling the bucket. So if you only eat one meal a day, even if you eat the carbs, you actually will reduce your glucose levels and you will be healthy. You want to finish the question? Well, PCOS is high androgen in a female body, and females do have some androgens, but in excess, it causes infertility. But what causes high androgens in a female body? It's excess carbohydrates, sugar, and caffeine. So those three things I avoid like the plague. And remember, if you're secreting glucose in your bloodstream all day and all night, what hormone must you secrete? Insulin. There's no such thing as insulin resistance. We're wrong. If you're hyperglycemic, you better make insulin. And an insulin pump is deadly. Because if you have an insulin pump, you must be putting what into your body all day long? Sugar, which is bad for you. Are we not idiots? If you are, if you are eating the sugar, such as ice cream, how are you staying in ketosis? OK, ketosis is incorrect, in my opinion. Forget the term ketosis altogether. A complex carb secretes glucose into the bloodstream all day and all night. A simple carb goes up and down. That means your insulin goes up quickly, you're converting the, the sugar to fat quickly, and your, your glucose level drops quickly. So I only eat a little bit of ice cream at night, but I'm not eating a complex carb because basically, a long time ago, we figured out how to cook food. Without cooking food, we would not be able to be here today. We didn't graze with raw food all the time. Modern, the modern food industrial complex has convinced us to eat a bunch of grass, and it's deadly. So, did that answer your question? Yeah, I, want, I have a question because I work in a doctor's office. I'm an MA, and so what a lot of things you're telling me are completely different than I've always been taught. Um, so I need to understand about fatty liver. They talk about fatty liver and too much fat in our diet, and now you're talking about eating fat. How is, you know, because if you have too much fat in your diet, you get a fatty liver, you can get fibrosis, and that leads to cirrhosis, even if you're not a drinker. All right, so fatty liver is caused by carbohydrates and protein, not eating fat. Who amongst us has been told by a doctor to eat fat? Who eats fat? You, almost no one eats fat, I'm sorry. Olive oil is not fat, coconut oil is not fat, margarine is not fat, what is fat? This is fat. And if you don't have it, you're dead. And I know it's crazy, but basically, fat reduces inflammation and reduces appetite when you eat real fat. But olive oil is not real fat, in my opinion. But basically, we've been taught the wrong thing. That's the problem. And it's really hard because the industrial food complex is powerful. 
It's like the drug cartel and the cigarette industry. It took the cigarette industry to be forced finally to shut up. Do you think the food industry is gonna do that easily? No. Who's responsible for what goes in your mouth, in your mind? We are. But basically, eating fat is the only way to get healthy or eat far less frequently. Do you have any more to add to that, Maria? Uh, what was it again? Fatty liver disease is caused by yeah. carbs. Carbohydrates, yeah. That's Lettuce causes fatty liver disease, by the way. I've been um, very interested in and researching on my own online a lot about what causes fatty liver disease. Did you know I've been taking Zyrtec for years. It removes choline. Any antihistamine will remove choline from your brain and from your body and from your liver. If you get a choline deficiency, you automatically have fatty liver disease, and people need to know that. Well, what causes allergies to require Zyrtec, Maria? Food. Food. Allergies are caused by the carbs you eat and the plant materials that basically cause allergic reactions. So guess what? Zyrtec absolutely does cause damage to our bodies, but sugar is number one. That's the problem. The story is really simple. Does your body want fatty liver? It does. Actually, there's no such thing because the liver stores fat. Why would it do that? So you live through the winter so you can reproduce and you can survive. But remember, as long as you're eating a high carbohydrate, and remember the term carbohydrate is all plant material is a carbohydrate. That's really hard to believe, isn't it? It is. Fruits, vegetables, and fiber, are they good for you? Why? Ask the question. You know that a donut sounds bad, but I would bet a billion dollars that a donut is better for you than lettuce and kale. Because lettuce and kale comes with what? Fiber, bacteria, and yeast. And are those good for your fermenting bowel? Chelsea, any other questions? From Angelo. I've been eating keto for roughly three years, and my blood sugar levels are over 90 every morning. Maria, what would cause this if I'm following a keto diet? I would like to see my sugar levels lower in the morning. Poor sleep, we'll do that for one. Uh, we've done a lot of studies, one in particular with Army Rangers. Um, their diet did not change at all, but they were forced to have six or less hours of sleep for uh, a period of time. And after only three nights of six or less hours of sleep, they, their cells started to look like a type 2 diabetic. Um, their blood sugars were going through the roof. So um, I would ask, are you getting eight hours of sleep at night? Probably not. So that's just one thing. We have a question over here, Maria. Um, Dr. Colbert, in his book, The, Diets, the Keto Zone Diet, suggests that if you're over 55 years old, you should also add a digestive enzyme containing extra lipase. Would you agree with that? Well, I'm 63, and I don't take any supplements. And so I think, you know, one of the things that Maria and I are talking about is real food without taking a whole bunch of supplements or anything else. So I haven't read the book, but if you have damaged liver or damaged pancreas, then these things may be necessary, but my bet is in general not. If you've had all this gastric bypass surgeries, maybe, but that's not my field of medicine. But in general, I think that uh, we shouldn't. You know, one of the questions comes is, why do we have such a big gallbladder? Anyone know? What's the, what's the function of the gallbladder, Maria? It's bile in order to emulsify fat that we don't eat. I was going to make a comment. Like, we, we kind of 
are hearing all of these things like, oh, be careful you do keto too long. Ooh, be careful, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But yet, do they say, if you have a drink of alcohol every day, you should get your liver enzyme checked? Like, come on, like, get rid of the alcohol, eat keto, eat real food, and your liver will be just fine. I wondered, when you were talking about exercise, I do exercise three times a week, and I just thought I was doing the right thing. So I'm wondering what else you're saying, don't exercise? Well, all right. I didn't say don't get up and be creative, but what do you create in running around a gym all day? We're not doing poetry, pottery, painting, interacting with people in a positive way. We're not building things or designing things. We're not making music. We're running around a treadmill, on a treadmill. And I know people who have fallen off a treadmill and injured themselves or died. But basically, I say, we have the same things we tell everyone. It, fruits, fiber, vegetables, lean meat, and exercise. And where has that gotten us? Nowhere. So when you exercise, you heat up the body and you increase the risk of damage to joints and everything else. And so I know it seems ridiculous, but I stopped about 10 years ago, and I used to have back problems and joint problems and mental problems. But I know it doesn't make sense because we like to do the things that make us feel good, don't we? Okay, I'm saying I, I don't go to the gym, but I do like to be out in the wilderness bounding with the deer in the woods. And it's for me, that is my art and my therapy and my quiet time. It's not, I never run on a treadmill. I never go to the gym. That type of, I love to take a walk with my kids in the woods. It's for me, it's beauty. It's not something I stress out and hate doing. It's something I love. But most people are packing their bag, going to the gym after work, which makes them not have time to make anything healthy at home. In that case, I really do think it's unhealthy. And I do agree with heating up the body. I'm all into cold therapy and all of that. But for me, it's my artistic quiet time to see nature. Go for a walk with your partner or friend. Do something different. But uh, in the savanna, if you decided to go for a run, <laughs> you'd be dead. And so these are the concepts that maybe we don't think much about. And it seems very opposite, and I too didn't believe them until I did them. And then I'm like, oh shit, this is amazing. That's all. Heroin makes us feel good too, by the way. Um, I don't have a gallbladder, so how do I do the keto? Well, I'll let Maria give this answer and I'll add if needed. Well, I wrote a whole thing about this, um, and it's on mariamindbodyhealth.com, but you're still, I mean, with gallbladder surgery, I mean, if you didn't produce something, you would die, you understand? And so it's just a modified ketogenic diet, just a little bit, and in which case your fat, what you use would be a little bit different, but more animal type fats are more natural. Um, but yeah, there's a whole list of, you probably want some supplements to help with digestion. Otherwise, you're probably going to have colon blow. But, but remember, if you're eating less frequently yes. and your, your liver still makes bile, it's still getting there. And, and in some way, we're afraid of food and we get psychologically sick, I think, faster than we actually truly get sick from the food. Um, I'm curious, you said you eat bacon. Where do you get your bacon? What kind of bacon? Beef bacon is the best from Side Hill Farms. So that's where I go. And uh, other than that, it's, I mean, I do pork bacon and, and, but, oh, well, I don't know anyone that's died of nitrates yet, but I would say, um, again, the I... most common cause of disease is glucose. Let's just, everyone get to this. We, we think too much about the things that are almost never killing us. Glucose is the leading cause of disease, diabetes, and that's the simple answer. But I, I don't do nitrate bacon anyway, but Maria, go ahead. Vegetables have more nitrates than bacon will ever have. Hey, hey, how are you? You know, I eat for my, I'm trying to eat for my blood type. They say it's a healthier way, which is actually a hunter's. It's your, it's your O-type diet, which is 
you know, basically what your diet consists of. It's the original, you know, caveman, whatever. But there's certain things like coconut, there's certain things that you can have, like no apple cider vinegar, none of that, which you're telling me you really don't have anyway. So eating for your blood type, what do you think of that? Um, looking at the research, eating for your blood type, it is always correct with the old type diet, but the other types of diets are failing. So I think that they're just getting back to, let's cut out the carbohydrates and it'll work for everybody. So the only way the blood type diet worked was for your specific blood type. So I think that's why. We're, we're, we're human animals like lions. We think we're different. And we find a lot of science that has told us a lot of different things. But despite all the science, how come we're getting sicker? Because the science is wrong. That's really the science behind this. Dr. Kiltz is really right. When you look at our cecum, our cecum looks just like a lion's. And that's how you digest plant matter. We don't have a cecum like a, po a koala bear that can digest plant matter. It looks just like a lion. So if you look back into that, it's really true. You started out mentioning at the very beginning that we were gonna look at things from what we can have and not what we can't. And we really haven't focused or defined well, all the things that are good for us that we can have and be here instead of saying every single thing that's wrong and what we can't have. Well, I tried not to do so that. Can we focus on that? Okay, so I, on my slides, I tried to show you, we'll still have burger night, we still have lasagna night, we still have, um, we still go out to eat, but I was showing you, okay, so if you go to my blog, mariamindbodyhealth.com, you will find 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 recipes for free, whatever you wanna eat, but like Dr. Kilt said, find things that you enjoy. Like, I don't really like salmon, but if you like salmon, there's salmon recipes on there. There's fish. I mean, there's so many recipes. I, what the biggest problem, you mentioned that you're always full on this diet. That's the biggest problem. There's so many good, delicious foods. I'm too full to try them all, right? Um, but there are, there's so many good recipes on there, but we only had a half an hour to speak, but I would have talked to you about all the delicious things. Variety is nice from time to time. Well, well, okay, you can eat anything. And there are plenty of recipes that Maria has for those that want all the variety. Our, our challenge in our humanness is that we are crazy for variety, but it's deadly. From time to time, have that thing. But all the time, it'll drive you diseased, in my opinion. Can you talk about some local resources for people who might want to do a keto diet? Um, you know, people who might have a dairy sensitivity so they couldn't possibly do yours. Where can we get help locally? Well, I go to Side Hill Farms, but any of the play markets, no James Market. I mean, these look like, well, well, the local, I mean, there's local farmers, um, Ellie's lamb, I don't even know, she came to me. A nutritionist? Oh, I work oh. with people all over. Oh. So, I, I do Skype consultations. I do online class on Sunday evenings. I do um, weekly meetings on Sunday evenings with webinars that you just log on. I work with people from India to, I mean, you name it, all over the place. But I also have dairy-free books out there because my goal is for you to spend $15, $20 and have all the meal plans you need. And I have two dairy-free books that have meal plans and really good food in there. Thank you. They're, they're the local, so... I mean, the amazing thing about these devices is you could talk to people from around the world, and it makes it so simple. But there are some local people, but we have, I just came up with our new uh, keto magazine. You can get it at our booth today, See My Healing Arts and See My Fertility. Uh, Maria, we get a tremendous amount of information from Maria, so it's excellent. Uh, my question's for Maria. I came here to see you. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm 71 years old, well, 70, and uh, I've had diabetes for 35 years, but I've gotten rid of insulin and all that stuff. Um, I'm still not, after all this time, not where I want to be. I've even trucked out to Tennessee to be see Dr. Barry, and um, 
I'd like you to talk a little about nightshades because I'm a little confused. Um, I don't have a gallbladder either, but I don't know if nightshades are something I really totally need to keep away from. I know I have to keep very low, low carbs. So when you said you're not reaching your goal, I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. Well, let's look at how you're sleeping. I can wake up, fall back to sleep. Some days are better than others. I'd say six hours. Oh, I can't do it. Yeah, I, I just I can help you with that. That's a progesterone estrogen balance thing. Oh, I definitely know it's an estrogen. That that would thing. be easier. That would be something more to talk about rather than nightshades. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, and I do supplement plans or, you know, like things with that whole estrogen progesterone balance, that type of stuff. Will you be somewhere where you can Um, talk? Otherwise, you can find it, find it on my website. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Marie's going to stop at our booth for a little bit. Yeah. And so. A lot. This is for, I think, both of you, actually. Um, a lot in the keto world talk about carb cycling or having carb ups. I know, like, Leanne Vogel, especially for women because of hormones. And so I'm kind of confused. Some say you can do keto long term. Some, I even think Mercola says, get to your ideal weight, then do some carb ups. I'm kind of confused. Maria? Well, looking at the science, you will lose muscle mass because you're jumping back and forth. What they don't understand is that you can make enough of that if you get your protein in. So, carb ups all right so carb loading or whatever it is we have a lot of stories in this business but like cycling your body like it's is a like a, it's a machine it doesn't like today and like in a month it does a cycling i mean we make up a lot of things that sound really good in this food world i mean stories and this is all about stories right and so remember you're a simple machine and you're a ferrari your body requires acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is the energy for the mitochondria. Acetyl-CoA comes from only one thing, fatty acids. Every time you eat carbs, you're just making fat in the liver. I don't know, whatever things people are thinking, it's a simple story, nothing else. So we like to share supplements and ways that you can do wine and alcohol or, or heroin, cocaine, or now low-dose LSD. Does that make any sense? Um, I never heard of the keto diet until recently, so I'm brand new. And I don't get where you said don't eat vegetables. I always grew up eat fruits, vegetables, not a lot of sugar. So I'm confused. The sun and carbon dioxide and water makes plants. The sugar plant is just another plant. Like lettuce, fruits, and vegetables, they're carbohydrates. Long chain carbon particles that we love because they're sweet. Well, we love them because they get us what? Fat, because without fat, you're dead. So you and I have been taught the wrong science. Fruits and vegetables are sugar. They're nothing else. They can't be anything else. But because we've been taught that sugar is different than vegetables, we can't fathom the story. So we've been given the wrong story in order to sell tobacco and alcohol and drugs. It's really stupid, I'm, I know. If you're looking okay. into like... You don't have to eat anything in particular, but if you don't eat something, you're dead. The beauty of our body is we are able to convert carbohydrates, sugar, to fat. That's the beauty. So, 
Thank you, Maria. And thank you, Wendy. Antoinette, thank you very much. Uh, Vida Dolce, Dolce Vida. All right, thank you everyone at CMY Fertility, CMY Healing Arts. Please come stop by and visit if you have any more questions.